Hey guys, it's good to have you back. Welcome to Rotten Orchard. On this episode, I'm gonna show you how to make a face. It's been a while since I've done a video, but it's good to be back. I've been taking care of a lot of business oriented things. We have a website. I'll put a link right here. Let's talk about this. This is the first of three that I plan on making. Uh, this is See No Evil. This is my version, the horror interpretation of it, if you will. And uh, we're not gonna go over the frame. I'm gonna leave that to y'all. We are gonna do a face. We're gonna 3D print a design and then we're going to mold it. And then we're gonna start working with some latex and get it painted all up. What you do with it from there is completely up to you. I've prepared a slight montage because uh, it is kind of a long process. So uh, without further ado, let's roll it.
Okay, so it's the next evening and uh, everything's dry. Now, I will tell you, I forgot to press record when I was in the process of doing these other layers, uh, but I can walk you through the process. Basically, I did about two or three layers of just the liquid latex. And uh, after that, I poured a layer while it was wet. Uh, I took some of this flocking from Woodland Scenics and uh, sprinkled it really lightly. Uh, I used this color and then I actually made some uh, red right here to give it a little bit more depth and color variation. You won't see it as heavily on the front side as you do on the back side, but um, we're gonna go ahead and demold this and uh, we'll cut the corners and hopefully we'll have us a completed piece. So we'll go ahead and get started. Uh, you should be able to just kind of grab a corner and just work it out. Just try to be slow, you don't want to rip it. I make this thin on purpose because I want it to look like flesh. I don't want it to be like overly thick like a mask. I think this is uh, this is about five or six layers, I believe. You know, slowly, slowly pull it out. There we go. And then you are left with a face. There you go. So that's our mold now um now one thing i forgot to tell you is uh get some baby powder i'm about to do that right now okay um because latex sticks to itself uh you definitely want to get just a little bit of baby powder nothing fancy i got this from the dollar tree i think or walmart and uh you just want to uh you just want to uh Put a little bit in there work it around because uh, latex will definitely stick to itself so you don't want to ruin your piece as soon as you pull it out of the mold okay so we've got it like this as soon as you get your mold pulled uh, like i say you put some baby powder on there we had kind of an incident earlier i got baby powder everywhere but um, as you can see, it's, it's in a square. We don't. We, we need. We need flaps. We don't want the square. So uh, what we're going to do is just go right, right there at the edge, at the corner, put in a, a sharp exacto knife, a new blade if possible, and uh, we're just going to cut the corners. Okay, so we've pulled the mold. We've taken a look at everything. Everything looks pretty good. Um, like I said, we did it kind of thin because I, I was trying to emulate uh, flesh. Uh, so now what we're going to do is we're going to take some scissors and uh, we're just going to trim it up a little bit. What you want to do is just go along like the bottom edge and uh, just try to trim it out. Try to be careful. I kind of like let the thick areas be like my guideline on this. Okay, so once we've got that, we'll uh, just kind of come in here in the nose area. I ended up using an exacto. Uh, my scissors are really dull, so. I'll just cut a little bit of that off. Can you see how already it's laying flatter? Okay. Um, but uh, we can just trim it down a little bit. But I'm going to do it and kind of. kind of different angles just make it look like it's been cut uh, the sides I actually like the way the sides look so I'm not going to trim those for the most part depending on what you're doing you're actually good to go with that just going to cut the eyes out remember this this supposedly came off of a person so uh, probably wasn't done with exact precision so you'll be fine and don't don't worry about the uh like the imperfections normally what i do is the imperfections get extra blood you know they're they're, they're torn they're they're just more damaged looking at the edges they're here they're here um especially this is just i, I guess it's a defect of the 3d print if you can see a little defect right here in the forehead and the brow, 
I just leave it like that. I just add blood there. So that's that's the way I took care of that problem. But uh, I am going to take a little bit more of this off. It's definitely something you can use to scare the hell out of somebody with. Um, and it, like I said, if you notice, we put the uh, we put that flocking on the on the back of the side, but on the front. It just, it kind of looks like variations of the skin. So what we're going to do is, just going to make a wash. I'm actually going to make a couple. Um, if you have inks, get yourself some inks. This is, uh, this is sepia. Two drops. Trust me, that's enough. If you like me, you like to have everything ready. Um, if you're following along, uh, I'll be using a red and a yellow as well kind of making more of a more of a stain than a, than a wash so i'm just going to start so going on here and seeing how i mixed it uh it's extremely diluted so it's 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 a lot easier to build up layers and take layers off so treat it like a wash let it let it go to the recesses Just let that sit like that for, for a minute. I know it looks all puddled up and everything it is, but just gonna let that ink kind of kind of sit there for a second, then we'll all uh, we'll pat it off. And just uh, pat it off a little bit. That wash was actually just a little bit too thin. Okay, so I have uh, let that layer drop, patted it down just a touch, and I went ahead and made my wash just a little bit darker. I'll put another layer on here. I just want to give it about a minute, maybe 30 seconds, 45 seconds, so yeah, just round about um, in between layers. Cut that draws a little bit. You don't want to rub it. Anything that's sticking there, you definitely want it to stay. But um, I just kind of pet, just drop in puddles. Wipe up a mess. Depending on what you're doing, you could probably get away with doing two or three coats like this and and just leaving it as is, and uh, and that'd be fine. But we're we're going for dead and rotten and stressed looking. So we're gonna do it a little bit darker. Um, probably actually, I was thinking about it, we're actually probably gonna take the yellow uh, ink and put it back on the shelf and we're gonna grab a blue. And we're gonna put a really watered down blue uh, over it just to kind of give it a, a more dead look. Do one more layer. Do your own thing, you know. You can always follow along, but definitely make it yours. Okay, so we've uh, went over it with the sepia, and um, I gave it a minute to let that dry completely. I'm getting out a cup over here. Um, we're actually going to go with the blue. And you want you want the blue tint to be really really light, so we're gonna use like two drops to so, well about a third of an ounce of a shot glass, about a third of a shot glass. Mix that up. Did want to mention one more time, we, uh, we just started a brand new website, plenty of pictures, we've got a download section, uh, a lot of the artwork that I do, we've got some wallpapers, things like that, uh, some printable posters, so definitely check that out.
Okay. And we'll let that dry. Especially with the darker colors, we're trying to build up a shadow. So like the blue and the black, I definitely just kind of let those sit for a little bit and try to let them just kind of stain a lot of the recesses. You don't want them puddled up, but like the little spots up under the, the eyelid, things like that, uh, definitely let that sit there for a little bit. Let's get the majority, just get the puddles. Oh yeah, he's already starting to look sick. We'll let this dry, we'll be right back. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is I've got the sepia tone on there. We've got the blue tone on there. I don't wanna wipe any of that away because that's what's gonna give us our, our death. So I'm gonna take this, uh, this clear coat. I missed it. We're gonna let that dry for a few minutes and we're gonna start putting on our reds and our blacks. When we do this red, it's gonna be a little bit different. Some, sometimes these reds can actually be just a little bit bright. So what I like to do, it's the way I do it anyway, is put down just a little bit of uh, our sepia wash. Remember that's already watered down, so. Um, I'm just going to put one or two drops. You want the red kind of strong, but you do want it diluted, maybe darken down just a little. And mix that up a little bit. Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's a good blood red. Okay. This isn't the blood effect, we're, we're still adding tones. But the way we're going to do this is I'm going to take my rag, I'm just going to dab some up. And we're just gonna, we're just gonna dab it. This is gonna kind of get rid of some of the, some of the brush strokes, and this and that. It's gonna kind of give us a highlight for the, uh, for the blacks. Kind of dab it on there. And the reason for this is we don't we don't need the reds to be uniform. We uh, we kind of we're still working on kind of variations of color. So, like I said, you can stop at any one of these steps, and you know, just depending on your needs, you'll be you'll be fine. Um, I'm actually gonna run down it one more time. But two drops. We're just gonna throw down a little bit of uh, sepia. We're a little bit more than half and half. So, and since we dab that on there, it's really light. It's a light coat, so it doesn't take long at all to draw. Dab that up, get that on my rag. I'm just gonna dab it. Yeah. Uh, just try to pay attention to like, like around the eyes, uh, the bridge of the nose, things like that. We're gonna detail this piece too, but uh, I wanna change the camera angle so you can uh, kinda see what I'm doing. So, just wanna get everything Make sure you get these uh, this back flap. You don't really see it from that angle, so make sure you get that. Don't worry about the holes, like the cracks and crevices. You're just getting the like the tops, of everything. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Okay, now that those red layers have dried, we want to seal those in once again. So, yeah, so with some clear coat. This clear coat I'm using is Rust Oleum Clear Dead Flat. I think I got it at Walmart, so. Get you to focus real quick. Kind of 
and see what we're building up. Like I said, it doesn't take hardly no time for the, just that little bit of a clear coat to, uh, to dry. Okay, so after that last coat of clear coat on top of the red, um, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna go ahead and it's looking dead already. Okay, so we're ready for our black wash. Put about three or four drops of uh, black ink. I'm gonna put two drops and four. I don't feel like fighting with it. And then uh, I'll dust flow improver and uh, just a little bit of water. I don't have any, but if you have a white ink, um, the areas that are going to be really gory, put a white ink or a white paint on there. That way, if you put a translucent blood paint on there, something like Blood for the Blood God or something comparable, then uh, what it'll end up doing is it'll end up looking like muscle tissue. You have those little white fibers here and there. I'm just going to dab it. Notice I've used the same rag, same side of the rag this whole time. You still have a little bit of ink uh, left behind on your rag, so that's that's helping with the uh, color variations. This is kind of going to tie everything together for the most part. Okay, I know it's a lot of steps, a lot of steps. That's, uh, that's what we're working with so far. Just kind of dab a little bit more of that. It's looking a little bit dark. You don't, you really don't want to wipe in the recesses. I'm going to try to leave it dark in the recesses. Just kind of the high points, just kind of go over. Just wipe them a little bit. See if you can tell, I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up. But if you can tell, as we're adding these layers, some of that clear coat is actually kind of flaking off a little bit. And it kind of gives like a really a really nasty distressed look now uh, when it comes to blood paint you definitely have plenty of options um we've got three right here uh, this is abomination gore by army painter or i'm sorry yeah army painter both of them uh this is glistening blood this would be more comparable to blood for the blood god so uh, my personal choice as you can see in my my empty container here uh, is, is definitely blood for a blood guy. Looking pretty, he's, he's had a bad day. Just, uh, I like the start and like all the damaged areas. Uh, if you want to get rid of the brush strokes, just kind of dab it. And I like to kind of dab it with my fingers just a little bit. Just kind of get it like an organic smear. Can't really do that with a brush. So you know, like some of these, these are the areas that are damaged, or they well, they they look damaged, like. We're ready for our last step, and we will have a finished uh, face piece for this guy rolling. The last step will be Alejo Gloss Varnish. This is going to give that wet look. Real nasty, real, real gross effect. You can go as many coats as you want, but uh, on this one I'll probably just do one. 
for demonstration purposes. Pretty much. Make him look sweaty, wet. So. Now, I will say, depending on uh, your particular needs, or what you're going to be using this for, there might be another product out there other than a gloss varnish. I'm not sure if the uh, Vallejo will crack, like if you're using it on a mask or anything like that. So, uh, just I would do some test pieces. Depending on what kind of brush you're using, um, uh, as you see, I'm, I'm having to use a small brush. This varnish does have a tendency to kind of foam up because you're having to move it around so much. You just constantly, just like this. So, uh, one thing that you can do to combat that is just take a lighter or a torch, heat gun, any kind of source of heat, and just kind of go over it. That kind of helps like pop any little, little bubbles or anything like that that might might throw the effect off but there you go you got a uh there you go really nasty bloody guy that's had an extremely bad day so i hope you've learned a lot um there will be more videos like this definitely following this uh this little set right here um, we have a Kickstarter and a GoFundMe page now, and uh, I will also link those in the description. And uh, definitely, if you have any ideas, anything you'd like to see us make, please list it in the comments. And uh, good luck and happy crafting. Take care, guys.